It looks like the Freedom for Russia Legion made a cross-border incursion into the Russian village of Kozinka, which is right on the other side of the Ukrainian border. And they took a shot at a Russian T-80. I can tell it's a T-80 from where the exhaust is coming out. It's coming out from the rear. I'm going to analyze the video in a second, but first let me set up what's going on in Kozenko, or at least what went on a couple of days ago. The Freedom for Russia Legion is made up of ethnic Russian volunteers who are fighting for Ukraine against Vladimir Putin's regime. Some of them left Russia to fight. Uh, some of them are Ukrainian, Russian-speaking ethnic Ukrainians. Uh, some are Russian soldiers who self-surrendered to the Ukrainians in order to fight uh, against the Russian army on the Ukrainian side and perhaps liberate their country from President Putin one day. Note that this will probably be a Substack exclusive because of the violence. I might try to recut it. So I appreciate everyone who tosses me $5 every month. It's because of you that I was able to get this studio and make a move and do this content full time. Now, I think this is the second major incursion into Russia proper by the Freedom for Russia Legion. And it makes sense that Ukraine is allowing ethnic Russians uh, serving in its army to do these kinds of cross-border incursions because it gives them a little bit of political cover. You know how I always say, give dilemmas, not problems, to your adversary? I, I even have it on this uh, knife hand knife that you can get from the knifehandcompany.com. And I really like this saying. A problem has one or more solutions. A dilemma has two or more solutions, all of which are equally bad. And the Freedom for Russia Legion's incursion into Kozenka is a dilemma for Russia. If Russia responds to the incursion, they have to pull troops from the line. If they don't respond, they have a team of ethnic Russians who sided with the Ukrainians running rampant in their rear. Dilemmas, not problems. Ukraine is really good at this kind of warfare. So I want to take a look at the video and then I'm going to break it down. So let's break this video down. Uh, this was geolocated to just 500 meters inside of Russia by Darth Incognito. And this soldier here is carrying an M72 Law light anti-armor weapon. This is a Vietnam era weapon. And uh, it got popular again from the United States carrying it in Afghanistan because for every AT-4, which is the modern light anti-tank weapon, you can carry two laws for every AT-4. So it kind of got popular again, and uh, it is still being produced by some countries. Now, this soldier might be firing a law from Canada, Denmark, or Belgium since they donated those particular systems to Ukraine. Now. The law might penetrate a tank with a side or rear shot, maybe. Uh, maybe an older tank, almost certainly not a modern tank. Um, you're probably looking at a mobility kill more than a catastrophic kill against a modern tank, or honestly, even some older tanks. The law ha has an older warhead. It's a 66. The law has a smaller warhead. It's a 66 millimeter warhead, so... Shooting at a tank is kind of a risk with this particular weapon. My guess is that these soldiers are carrying laws because it's light and it's perfect for a cross border from the east, from the border, with what I assume is the smoke generator just running at full blast. The turret is faced rearwards. I think they were clearly engaging something on the border and they decided that what they were engaging was just too mean and they decided to run like all heck to the east uh, because they didn't want to play that game anymore with whatever they were engaging a couple of meters behind in the west. Now the problem with going out alone is that you're going out alone and if you're alone nobody is there to help if trouble comes and here comes trouble. So this guy takes cover behind a dirt berm at what I think is a construction site. He engages and hits right between the first and second road wheels of the T-80. Now the arming range of the law is about 10 meters. So this shot is really close. I'm not sure the law armed in time or the armor on that 280, uh, T-80 is just too thick. Either way, the tank just keeps moving the hell out of there and didn't even try to engage. So I think this is a sign of sheer panic in that crew. And the soldier then heads for better cover. So a couple of takeaways. First, 
It took some giant stones to take on a T-80 with an anti-armor weapon that was obsolete back in the 1980s. Second, I don't know if it was all that wise to engage. Uh, you, you might have wanted to let that tank pass because you, you, st you stand a better chance of making that tank mad than actually getting that K-kill, that catastrophic kill, or even a mobility kill from a weapon like a law. Um, it, third, it, it may have been better to engage from the rear rather than the side because you have a better chance of penetrating rear armor, um, but then the tank is, is a little harder to hit. So I'm actually thinking that soldier thought, screw it, I'm not carrying this darn law all the way back to Ukraine. Here's my chance to get rid of it. Maybe I'll get lucky. And uh, he lived through the encounter, so he definitely got lucky. This was a raid and it served its purpose. This team caused so much panic that Russia just leveled the village with uh, Fab 500 glide bombs. And here's what it looks like now. Now, I don't know the current status of the Freedom for Russia Legion. Uh, they may have retreated back across the border. They may still be operating inside of Russia. I don't really know their status currently. I believe this uh, event happened four to six days ago. Now, it seems like the raid had a mixed effect. Uh, it seems like Russia just decided to level the village rather than pull the troops off the line and clear villages house to house. But for at least one day, Russia had to divert its Su-34 bombers to a mission of leveling the village. And for every bomber that's diverted to leveling a Russian village, that's one less bomber that can toss glide bombs into Kharkiv. So if you want to get technical, the raid worked. Russia might not have pulled troops off the line to close that gap, but they had to divert aircraft, so I'm going to call that a win. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, create dilemmas, not problems, for your adversary. Hey everyone! New Ryan Macbeth t-shirts and hoodies from Bunker Branding are available. I'm going to get the Highmars shirt. What are you going to get, Donald? The Patriot shirt, because I'm a Patriot. It's the best shirt, the biggest shirt. Make 14 tangos great again. What are you going to get, Barack? Let me be clear. I'm gonna get a drone sweet drone shirt. What about you, George? I'm gonna get a Trident missile shirt because they're weapons of mass destruction. Oh, I'm gonna get a landmine marker shirt because my presidency always blew up in my face. I'll tell you what I'm gonna get. Ronald Reagan, but you're dead. I came back to tell you that no matter our politics, we're all Americans. And we should buy Ryan's hoodies and t-shirts because they pay for the stock footage and licenses that allow him to make awesome content. So come on down to Bunker Branding and buy a Ryan Beth t-shirt or I'll start the bombing in five minutes.